Crystal Ball College Football. I'm your host, Grayson Grunhey. For today, let's talk about BYU. Can BYU make the college football playoff? Can they be the Cincinnati of last year? I don't know, but right now they are well on their way after getting a huge win over a top 10 Baylor team over the weekend. They won at home 26 to 20. Uh, in double overtime, one heck of a football game. I don't know if you stayed up late enough to watch it, but it was a very physical, grinded out type of game. Um, BYU had a bunch of chances to win this game. Um, Couldn't do it until the very end. They were able to finish things out by getting a huge stop uh, on Baylor. So I, I just felt like, you know, in general, watching BYU, you know, they had a great home environment. They were the better team on that day. I'm not saying they're they're a better team than Baylor. Baylor's a very good team as well. But I think on that day, if you were watching that game, BYU without their two biggest playmakers at wide receiver, they still came away uh, with a huge win. And their defense was physical. Their quarterback was very good, Jaron Hall. um, And they just made the plays necessary to win this game. And even if you go look through some of the things that happened, I mean, they're their kicker, Jake Oldroyd, he missed a 35-yard field goal that would have won them the game in regulation. Then he missed a 37-yarder to win in overtime, and you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, how are they going to give up this game right now? They've been fairly in control of it for a long time, and now they've missed these kicks for the win, and now how are they going to respond? Well, they came out in double overtime, got a touchdown, went for two, did not get it. So then Baylor got the ball. Baylor drove it down to the five-yard line. First and goal at the five. And that BYU defense stood up to the test. Uh, Got four straight stops, held Baylor out of the end zone, and they were able to come away with the win. I think that's going to be a very memorable stand for that defense throughout the year as they were able to get it done against a very physical Baylor team that was really moving the ball, uh, especially in overtime running it. And BYU stood up to the test. So I was very impressed with that. Now, on the offensive side, You know, Jaron Hall was very solid in this game, 261 yards. He had a touchdown. The stats don't bear it all out. Uh, He was very in control of this entire football game. Um, Their offensive line only gave up two sacks, um, and I thought that was big news for them as well. I think they held up pretty well against the pressure that Baylor was bringing against them. And without Puka Nakua and without Gunnar Romney, they still found a way to manufacture offense. And kudos to Chase Roberts. He had eight receptions for 122 yards and a touchdown. For them to get that kind of performance from Hall and from Roberts, despite missing those two guys, that's huge. And also when you look at the fact that they were only three of 14 on third down, yet they still were able to put up 366 yards of total offense, that speaks to the explosiveness of the offense. They were able to create some explosive plays, Well, on the flip side, Baylor was having to really manufacture first downs by just getting a couple yards at a time. BYU, whether they were consistent or not, didn't really matter because they were able to hit on a few explosives, particularly in the passing game. So in general, very impressive effort. And so now I think that leads to the question, right? Can this team make the college football playoff? Can they be last year's Cincinnati? And when you look at their schedule, you kind of sit there and go, man, that's going to be tough. If you remember last year, Cincinnati had the win over Notre Dame. Since he also had the win over Houston. But if you look at BYU's schedule, if they run the table here, they would have wins over Baylor, at Oregon, Notre Dame, and Arkansas. Also, you can throw in at Boise State and at Stanford as well as just other wins to add a cherry on top. So if they go 12-0, and I think they have a great shot at making it. I think they would make it just based on the the toughness of the schedule, but unfortunately they will not be able to get in with a loss. A big part of that is because they don't have that final 13th game that gives you that final point going into the final weekend. So they'd have to sit there at 11 and one. And even with that tough schedule, their one loss would likely be to a team like an Arkansas or Notre Dame, a team that they really need that win on their resume. So they can't get there if they go 11 and one, but they can if they go 12 and 0. And I think they will if they go 12 and 0. Now, how realistic is that? Well, they go to Oregon this weekend, and after just playing against Baylor, a very emotional game, this is probably going to be a tough one for them to get up for, and they're going on the road, so I could definitely see them losing this weekend. Uh, They're the underdog going into this matchup, so it's very possible uh, that they drop this one. Then they get Wyoming and Utah State. They're winning those two. 
Notre Dame in Vegas at Allegiant Stadium, that'll be interesting. Notre Dame doesn't look very good, but I still think Notre Dame's defense could come in and maybe make some plays, shut down the run game, and make BYU one-dimensional. That's very possible. And then Arkansas, which I think is the most likely loss. I know it's in Provo, and I know Baylor wasn't able to overcome that, but I think Arkansas's run game, their physicality, um, I think that will show, especially after this run of games that BYU will have with no bye week. I think it's going to be tough for them to beat Arkansas after playing this many games in a row without getting a break week. So I don't think it's the most realistic situation, but if they do go undefeated, they will absolutely make it into the playoff. Now, on the flip side of that, I think they are going to be the group of five team that makes it to a New Year's Six game. Um, Because I'm looking at their schedule compared to Cincinnati or Houston, and while those teams might play each other, they don't have as many tests outside of conference play. And I think for that reason, I think BYU has a leg up, even if they go 10 and 2 this year, just because, you know, they go 10 and 2, that means they have two wins over either Baylor, Oregon, Notre Dame, Arkansas. That's a great spot to be. And I think for that reason, they would probably stick inside the top 15 and find themselves playing in a New Year's Six Bowl, um, unless you get the fluky, you know, Cincinnati goes 12 and 1. Then it will be more of a debate. But right now, BYU is is in a great spot. I think they're the best group of five team in the country. Um, And they're the type of team that I don't think anyone, anyone wants to play. Very physical, good quarterback play, and a team that I think is playing very good football at this point in the season. So I was very impressed with BYU. Their defense played really well. So much physicality, a fun environment, a very electric environment. They were ready for that game, that late night kick. um, And they came up with a huge win. So kudos to BYU. Went out, got the job done. Now a lot of work left to do, but a very fun and exciting team that had one of the biggest wins of the weekend uh, on Saturday. So thanks for joining. I appreciate everyone for listening. This has been Crystal Ball College Football.